I'm Don Bishop from Belgrade, Montana, and we're here at the International Federation of Fly Fishers Conclave in West Yellowstone 2013. I'm tying up some coronamids that my buddies in Washington State like to use on those prairie pothole lakes for those big triploid uh, trout. And um, basically, these are midge imitations that in a fertile lake will grow to some pretty substantial size limitations that you, you would not ordinarily think of for a midge, but uh, given the right circumstances, you'll get some, some pretty darn big bugs. And as you'll see, I'm, t I'm tying here a, uh, a 14 natural bend hook that uh, is going to sink. I put a tungsten bead on it, uh, which may be more bead than you really need, but uh, it's kind of nice for for purposes of, of demonstration. And I've got uh, two different materials here that I'm going to wind back side by side. One is just a, uh, uh, a fine, a, a small uh, red wire. And then the other is this clear stretch magic that you can get at a, uh, at a craft store. It's very inexpensive. You get uh, 32 uh, feet at a time, and that's, that's going to do you an awful lot of flies. And, and particularly if you uh, spend some time working on these uh, working on these flies, getting them set up, you'll find that you build a fairly bulletproof fly. I'm going to try rewinding that. Actually, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go through and wind this kind of an open wind, and then I'm going to come back with the stretch magic. And what that's going to do is give us some of that translucence that you oftentimes see when a midge pupa starts making its way toward the surface and it fills that husk with, uh, with gas to help float it up there to the surface. And we'll, uh, we'll get ourselves ready. I'm going to just tie that off real quick before I bring in the uh, stretch magic. And I hope I'm not getting my hands in your way too much here. Now I'm just going to try to come in between those wraps with this stretch magic. And you can see that gives some substantial segmentation to the fly and also allows some of that red to show through. And, and the midge larva and the early pupil stage oftentimes have a significant amount of hemoglobin just like our red blood cells. So that's how that fly gets to be red or why that bug gets to be red and they are commonly referred to as blood worms. And that's exactly what uh, what they're showing you is that they've got material in them that's uh, identical to what we've got in our red blood cells. Okay, now I've got that wrapped and there are a few things that you'd like to do with a, a coronamid or a midge and I'll show you what those are as soon as I helicopter this wire off. Hmm, I must have gotten a pretty good piece of... there we go. Now I'm going to build a thorax on this thing and the thorax on these bugs is almost always of a dark color. And sometimes I'll tie these flies with, uh, with white thread, but I, I bring in a whole bunch of magic markers of different colors, and I can fine tune these flies to be whatever color I like. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna have to do this since I'm using all of the thread here, but I wanna show, point out a couple things here as soon as we get this tied off. And I'm just gonna give this a single whip finish. If I were not going to use any uh, any cement, well, I, I oftentimes go ahead and just throw on a second uh, a second whip finish. But I'll show you what I and a lot of uh, folks do is we'll just go ahead and take our head cement and coat this whole fly down. And by golly, when you do that, you're going to have a fairly bulletproof fly. And I'll tell you what, unless you're using an awful fine leader or you're chasing after some awfully big fish, 
you build flies like this and a dozen of them may last you the whole season. And as you can tell, they're a simple fly to tie and uh, they're pretty darned inexpensive. And uh, that's all done and it probably took us oh, at least a couple minutes to tie that fly. And that's all there is to it.